Was that pretty? Mm. Ah, boy, this whole Holy Spirit. Sweet. It is so sweet. And if you felt it here, that's the Holy Spirit. If you felt happy, that's the Holy Spirit. In this place. Well, to recap what we so far, we learned last Sunday that the Holy Spirit existed a long, long time ago in the very beginning. In the very, very beginning. And the Holy Spirit exists here today. I want to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit today. If you saw in your bulletin, it had, the scripture was... Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. Well, God told me last night, about 2 o'clock, hey, you're going to have to do a little more than just 7 to 11. We're going to do the whole chapter. The whole chapter, because it's, it's talking, Paul is talking to the church. And that's what we are today. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And this message is to the body of Christ, not to Saren United Church of Christ, not to First Congregational Methodist, not to Fellowship Baptist, not to the Catholic. It's to the body of Christ. That's all of us. This morning, there's no denomination. It's the body of Christ learning what the body of Christ needs to be doing. And I've got to tell you, we, we, had a, we had a service at Salem UCC this morning, and our, our children's moment talked about collaring. Can everybody see this? Okay. And I tell you what, the Holy Spirit spoke to me there, just totally changed everything. Have you ever been on something and it, it gets totally changed? I mean, sometimes your bosses or somebody you work with or family members, you, you got to change it. But, but this made so much sense to me. You see, when children learn to color, they, they color outside of the lines, don't they? You see that? I mean, that, it's, it's beautiful, but it's kind of outside the lines. When the first group of Christians were meeting... The new religion of Christianity, what, what they were called to do, it kind of looked like this. There were some set rules, but, but they were struggling. It's like, who's in charge? Who takes care of this? Who does that? Who tells us what to do? And if we disagree, what do we do? There were some set rules, but... but Paul had to go and, and talk to them because they were collaring out of the lines. That's what chapter 12 is about this morning. And it's also the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the church 2,000 years ago was kind of collaring out of the lines and it needed guidance. Now the church today, not building, not denomination, but do you think the church is perfectly staying in the lines today? You can go yes or no. I mean, the church is always struggling to stay in the lines. I don't have a perfect page that is collared, because this one almost cost me a dollar to get this morning from here this morning. But, uh, but uh, the I want you guys to imagine, you know me, I want you to use your heads today. And the church of Paul's time, right after Jesus, was kind of a, a scary group of folks. They didn't know what the future was. They were, they were uncertain. But the Holy Spirit was in the beginning. And the Holy Spirit was there at that time. And the Holy Spirit is here today, right? Everybody go, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And from, from that beautiful song, Come Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in this place. A gift is given, not earned. You can receive a gift or reject a gift. Did you hear that? You can receive it or reject it. The Holy Spirit and the gifts that the Holy Spirit bring are freely given to you. You can either accept them or reject them. But the only way to accept a gift from the Holy Spirit is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Does everybody understand that? So that's the only way to have a gift from the Holy Spirit that is given freely if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So today, before we hear the scripture, I want you to imagine, you're, you're using your brains again, I want you to imagine a big chalkboard, and I want you to write every single thing you've ever done on that chalkboard, good or bad. Now if you feel a little safer by closing your eyes, go ahead so nobody will see what you're writing down. I'm going to write mine down here. Just imagine every single thing you've ever done, good or bad, it's right there on the chalkboard. Now we have a magic eraser. This eraser will erase every single blot. Every chalk mark, every period, every wrong thing, every right thing. Let's erase it. Did you erase yours? Every single thing is erased. Now, when you, some of you teachers remember the old chalkboards when you erased, you still had dust and powder on it. These are magic erasers. They're microfiber, and they get all the dust, too. There's nothing left, not a speck of dust on that chalkboard. And you've written everything. I mean everything. Every single thing. Now it's gone. You've all got clean slates this morning. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you have a clean slate this morning because the Holy Spirit has come to this place? I want you to believe that with all your heart. Everything that you've ever done is gone. Clean slate this morning. Just as the church that was kind of messing up 2,000 years ago, they heard these inspired words by Paul and they got reorganized. They learned that they were a body and each of them had an important thing to do. Each of them had a duty, a task, a gift. And they all worked as one. Still bumping heads because people bump heads but they were allowing the Holy Spirit to guide them. Back then, and then today, also. Hear these words. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaks by the Spirit of God over ever, ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is, is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. 
And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but the same God who activates all them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. And to the other, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the, by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as one body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink one spirit. Indeed, the one, one body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make me less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make me any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose, chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you, nor the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the members of the body at, that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less representable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior members that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. What a powerful, powerful message from God to the first church. What a powerful, powerful message from God to this body. The body of Christ. 
that we heard this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, come to this place. And you, when you walked in these doors, the Holy Spirit walked in with you. Amen. Amen. And while you sit here, the Holy Spirit sits in you individually. Amen. Amen. And when you leave this place, the Holy Spirit will leave with you to do the service. But we are also all called together to work as one body. Some of you are sitting here wondering, what, kind of, what is my gift? What do I have to offer to the body of Christ? Some of you know already. Now, Lori's not here right now, but I know one gift that she has is definitely knowledge, teaching, and wisdom. They kind of all go together. Amen? They kind of, and if you know her, you know she's blessed. I'm blessed with those gifts through her. I was talking with Harry and Linda yesterday, and one thing about Saren Church, it is blessed so much with the teaching spirit, the knowledge spirit. They all, and, and these, these gifts, these gifts all go together. I shouldn't call it spirit. They're given by the Holy Spirit. They're gifts from the Holy Spirit. These gifts all work together. They work in a church that scribbles outside of the lines then and that is scribbling outside of the lines today. You see, we'll never be perfect. I want to share what some of these, kind of the definition of some of the gifts the gift of wisdom, wisdom seems to be the ability to make decisions and give guidance that is according to the, to the will of God. That sound good? That is the gift of wisdom. The gift of knowledge is the ability to have an in-depth understanding of a spiritual issue or situation pretty powerful now maybe if you hear this and if that's really clicks in you that's your gift the gift of faith the gift of faith is being able to trust God and encourage others to trust God no matter the circumstances no matter the circumstances is the gift of faith now, I'll tell you the truth, each and every one of us should have that gift. And if you don't, pray for it. Say, God, give me that gift too. You see, it's freely given. But like I said earlier, sometimes our faith just isn't as strong as we know it should be. That's the gift of faith. The gift of healing is the ability to use God's healing power to restore a person who is sick, injured, or suffering. Now, we've all seen on television the faith healers that touch someone and they, they fall down. And, and I've seen that happen before, but in my mind, I was thinking, hmm, right. Now, that, maybe that's where, and maybe that person was healed, but deep down in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, I wonder how much they paid that guy to come up there and fall off the stage. Have you thought that? Okay, here's where all those other gifts that can kind of kick in if you think you possess those gifts that was freely given to you. The gift of knowledge, wisdom, gift of healing, gift of faith. Maybe that person was healed, but you're still collaring out of the lines because you're allowing your doubt and fear to maybe lessen your faith in knowing that maybe that truly did happen. How many of you believe that someone can have the power to heal someone? You better raise your hand. Through the power of Jesus Christ, anything is possible. Amen? anything but still when I see something like that I still struggle so that means I'm still coloring out of the lines like they were way back then and like today 
Now, I'm just personally talking about myself. I'm sure all you call her perfectly in the lines, right? That's just one example. The gift of miracles is being able to perform signs and wonders that give authority to God's word and the gospel message. I see miracles every day. I mean, if you look for them, if you're not looking for them, if you're going around and your faith is like way down here, you're not going to see miracles. But that's a gift of the Spirit. And how many of you have seen a miracle happen right before your eyes? Well, every single hand, it's a trick question. Every single hand should have went up. Because believe me, brothers and sisters, you've seen it, but you're sitting here and you don't want to... Somebody might see you raise your hand. What? If you've seen a miracle, praise God. Everybody say, praise God. Praise God. Now, if that made you feel uncomfortable, we need to be praying more as the body of Christ. Because if you can't say, praise God, there's a problem. Amen? And if you can't say amen, there's a problem. Amen? Amen. You see, we're the body of Christ. We're Saren United Church of Christ, but first and foremost, we're the body of Christ, brothers and sisters. And there are so many gifts and talents sitting right out here that are untapped. You need to be sharing your gift with this body, and then just think what this body can do when we release all these gifts. We're unstoppable in the name of Jesus Christ, because that's why we're here. It's on our sign, Saren United Church of Christ. What's that last word I just said? Christ. What is it? Christ. Say it a little bit louder. Christ. Never be ashamed to say the word Jesus Christ. The gift of tongues, the ability to speak a foreign language that you do not have knowledge of in order to communicate with someone that speaks that language. Well, tongues is always, I get in conversations about tongues all the time with people. And God clear to me it's tongues it doesn't have to be chinese it doesn't have to be russian maybe it's the maybe it's the language that the addicts are talking down at the corner and maybe god can help me through some study and through some faith and through some knowledge and through some wisdom that i can go down to that corner and speak their language Maybe they'll understand me. Maybe I won't understand them. But if I don't understand them, maybe I can get someone from the body of Christ that's been down that road before, that's a recovering addict, that knows how to talk to that person. Maybe if I take them with me and work as the body of Christ and they can share what they're going through and they can speak back to me and then maybe I can understand it. Interpretation. Are you with me on that? Do you understand what I just said? It doesn't have to be this gibberish that what people think it is. It can be totally different, but still be a tongue that is put there by God, by the Holy Spirit. And you have that gift to go into that prison, that mental institution, that low housing district. That place where nobody ever goes. Maybe you'll be able to speak their language. And if you can't, you take an interpreter with you. Someone that's been there before. The gift of administration. Being able to keep things organized in accordance to God's principles. Administration. Now, do we have any administrators here? <laughs> That's what keeps the administrators. 
That's what keeps the church in line. Those are the folks that sharpen the crayons, sharpen the pencils, get the rulers out to make sure that we, we stay focused. Those are your pastors and your, your, your Sunday school teachers and your consistory members. Those are the, those are the people that, that want to see the body of Christ do exactly what it really is supposed to be doing. And they have the gift of knowledge, wisdom. They have all those gifts. And they're bringing that to the body of Christ. All those other gifts that are going to those places that speak foreign language that may they, maybe they don't understand. But they're going there because they're staying in the lines of the church what it's supposed to be doing. That's what the gifts of the Holy Spirit do. And one of the biggest and most important gifts that I think and I know everybody has, it's called the gift of help or helps. The gifts of help helps is always having the desire and ability to help others to do whatever it takes to get the task accomplished. Now I can look here and I can honestly say that I see each and every one of you and you have that gift of helps. I've seen it happen and I know it can happen and I've, I've worked right along beside you. But we have so much other work to be doing. And this week, I want you to concentrate on what you think your gift of the Holy Spirit is. Some of you already have identified what that gift or gifts are. But if you haven't, I want you to pray. And I want you to meditate. And I want you to think and ask, God, what, what is my gift? Because if you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you've received those gifts. You, you may just not know how to, how to work with them right now. And as Paul went and talked to the, the first group of Christians, that's what God's doing today. This message is, it's not me talking, it's the Holy Spirit. And it's saying, I've given you this gift and you've accepted it. You just don't know how to use it yet. And if you need help, get with someone in the body because we're all one. We all work together. Get someone in the body that's got some knowledge. And maybe they can help me see my gift. And if you know you've got a gift and you want to you wanna get more involved, get more involved. Strengthen that faith. All have, you all have the gift of helps. Let's help those people that are struggling with finding out what their gift is. And again, I'll say, if you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you have the gifts. It was freely given to you. Amen? Amen. Amen.